Good morning, everyone. Uh, for today, I'm going to teach you how to solve problems involving permutation with condition. Let's define first what do you mean by permutation. In uh, probability, this is an arrangement of n distinct objects in a specific order. For example, we have three paintings, A, B, and C, and we want to arrange those three paintings in a row. These are the possibilities. We have A, B, C, B, A, C, C, A, B, A, C, B, B, C, A, and C, B, A. So in total, we have six possible arrangement. Now, of course, we, we don't need to do this in all of the problems. That's why later on, I'm going to teach you how to do that. In permutation, we need to remember these two things. Number one, repetitions are not allowed. Equivalently, the same element may not appear more than once in an arrangement. The second is the order in which the ele elements are selected or arranged is significant. So it's, it's very important if we talked about the arrangements of the elements. Let's go to the examples here. So let's say we have two physics books, four chemistry books, two botany books, and three zoology books. In how many ways can you arrange them so that the books on the same subject are together? So here in this kind of problem, we need to consider two things. Number one, we have four different books, the physics, chemistry, and the zoology. And th those books should be together. So physics books together, chemistry books together, botany books together, and <clears throat> zoology books together. So which means we can have um, this arrangement, like physics books first, chemistry books second, botany, zoology, or we can be all, it can also be chemistry first and then physics, botany, or zoology, etc., etc. So if we want to compute that using the uh, uh, procedure, uh, we can let's say in in the four in the first option here, we have how many uh, possible options can we put there? We have four. It can be physics, it can be chemistry, it can be botany. So we have four options there. We put one there on the second square, we will only be having three options. So let's say we put the physics there. So now we have three options, the chemistry, the botany, and then the zoology. We put, let's say, the chemistry there. That means on the, sec on the, the third square, we only have two options. And of course, on the last one will be one. So what we're going to do with these numbers is just multiply those numbers, and that will give us 24. So that is the arrangement of those group of books. Now, of course, we need to consider first the arrangement of each physics books, of each chemistry books, of each botany books, and each zoology books. So we need to consider that. So for the physics, let's say the physics is here, we have two possible options. Right? So here we have two because there are two physics books and then we have one. For chemistry, there are four. So that means we have four and then it becomes three, two, and one. For botany books, we have two and then one option. For the uh, zoology books, we have three, two, and one. And what are we going to do with those numbers? We will just multiply all of them. So it's just, we can say it's 2 factorial times 4 factorial times 2 factorial times 3 factorial, which is equal to 576. Now we have these two considerations. The last thing that we will do is multiply those two numbers, and that will give us 13,824. All right. Let me give you another example. If you don't understand that, let's see. Maybe the second one will give you a better idea of what, what are we doing here. There are two physics books, four chemistry books, two botany books, and three zoology books. Again, we have four different books here. Physics, chemistry, zoology, and botany. Now here, in how many ways can you arrange them? Arrange them. Okay. So here, if you look at this and compare this from the previous example, let's go back to the previous example here. In how many ways can you arrange them so that the books on the same subjects are together? So in this example, there is a condition, right? The books in each uh, kind should be together. Here, you don't see that. So that means if you see this kind of problem, you will just add the number of books that we have here, which is 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3. And that will be equal to, um, uh, what's that? 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3. And that will be equal to uh, um, 11, right? 
So that means we have 11 options here. That's just as 11 factorial. So 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 1. And just multiply all those numbers. And that will give us this product, 39,916,800. All right? Let's go to the third example. Okay, so here six men and four women are to be seated in a row so that all men and the women are seated together. This is actually the same as um, example number one. So men should be sitting together and the women should be sitting together. Okay, so let's say this. Men, we have six men and then the, the four women. So we have here... Men and women, we can switch them, right? Women first on the right, on the left rather, and then men. So that's another consideration. That's one consideration rather. So that's two factorial. And then within those um, men and women, there are also possible arrangements. That's six factorial for men and um, four factorial for women. So what we will do is just multiply all these three. So two factorial times this is going to be uh six sorry let me erase that two factorial the arrangement for men and women because because it can be men women uh, sorry men first and then women or women and then men times six factorial for the arrangement of all the six men and then four factorial and that gives us thirty four thousand five hundred and sixty all right okay let me give you another example here, in how many ways can four men and five women sit in a row if no two women can sit next to each other? So that's the condition. No two women can sit next to each other. So let me just give you an illustration. This is a perfect illustration. So here, what you can see if the men, or sorry, the, or the condition, if, if no two women can sit next to each other, then we can have men first. So man first here, man, right? Man, 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 man. Women, woman, woman, woman. So that's just the same as five factorial for the man and then multiply that by four factorial for the woman. Because we can we can have it like well, that's the answer, 2,880, but I'm just going to give you an, a, a detailed explanation because this can be, oh wait, let's go back to the, this one. This can be 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. That's 5 factorial, and this is 4, 3, 2, and 1. That's 4 factorial. So you multiply those two, the answer is 2,880. I'm going to give you, I think, three more examples here. Romeo and Juliet together with their seven friends will go to a birthday party. They are about to sit in a row. How many different seating arrangements are possible if Romeo and Juliet want to sit beside each other? So Romeo and Juliet, we can consider them as one. Okay? So that's one. One and then the seven, that will be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So, two considerations again here. Number one, if Romeo and Juliet are sitting together, it can be Romeo, Juliet, or Juliet, Juliet, Ro Romeo. That's two factorial. And then, since we consider them as one, the arrangement for including those seven friends will be eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Or eight factorial. So 2 factorial times 8 factorial is equivalent to 80,640. All right? Okay, let me give you another example. So here, Romeo and Juliet together with uh, their seven friends. This is actually connected to the previous example. Uh, related, directly related. Seven friends uh, will go to a birthday party. They are about to sit in a row. How many different seating arrangements are possible if Romeo and Juliet does not want to sit beside each other? Okay. <clears throat> so here, we will now consider Romeo and Juliet as two different entities. So you have 
Romeo and Juliet, that's 2, plus 7, which is equivalent to 9 factorial. So let's say, let's consider first that there's a possibility in that 9 factorial, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's consider this first. Regardless of whether Romeo and Juliet wants to sit beside each other or whether they don't want to sit beside each other, we know that if we include Romeo and Juliet in this seven with the seven friends, the number of possible ways will be nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. This is regardless if Romeo and Juliet wants to sit beside each other. That's the arrangement. Okay, so that's what? Nine factorial. Now, in the previous example, we have there the answer for, that's 80,640 possible ways of Romeo and Juliet wants to sit beside each other. So what we were going to do here is I'm just going to subtract that to 9 factorial. Why is that? Well, because 9 factorial is the uh, combination of the arrangements of when Romeo and Juliet wants to sit beside each other or, and rather, Romeo and Juliet does not want to sit beside each other. So it's going to be 9 factorial minus the arrangement wherein Romeo and Juliet wants to sit beside each other. So the answer here will be 282,240. All right, let's go to another example. Again, Romeo and Juliet, together with their friends, 10 friends this time, will go on a birthday party. They're about to sit around the circular table. How many different sitting arrangements are possible if Romeo and Juliet, this time, again, they want to sit beside each other? But take note of this. Uh, what's that? Circular table. So we all know in circular permutation, the formula of that is n minus 1 factorial, right? Now, Romeo and Juliet wants to sit beside each other, so we will consider them as 1. Now, Romeo and Juliet can be Romeo, Juliet, or Juliet, R Romeo, even in a circular permutation. So that gives us 2 factorial. Now, we will consider Romeo and Juliet as 1. With the 10 friends, so our n will be 11. Why is that? 10 friends plus Romeo and Juliet. And Romeo and Juliet, they are considered as one because they want to sit beside each other. So times, uh, we will use the circular permutation formula, 11 minus 1 factorial, which is equivalent to 2 factorial times 10 factorial. And that is equal to 7 million two hundred. 57,600. That's it. So that is our lesson for today. I hope you learned this lesson. It's, it's kind of challenging, but I know you will understand this lesson. All right. Thank you and um, have a nice day.